There is experience and then there is foundation. There is the word and there is the spirit. And the, okay, I'm going to give you this. Watch me. They're not saying anything. Watch me. Watch me. The church, and this is all I'm going to give you because I don't want to get started on this now. Uh, Dr. Dr. Jewett, God made a promise. Shout a promise. Promise. To Abraham. Didn't he? Through you, all nations of the earth shall be blessed. I bless those that bless you. I curse those that curse you. Didn't he? And Abraham attempted, watch me, to believe the promise. He attempted to believe the promise. But some time passed. Are y'all listening? Some time passed. And so Abraham decided through the arm of the flesh to attempt to help God alone. Let's just help him. Because God needs some help. Now don't be looking at me like, how dumb of Abraham. You probably did the same thing four times this week. Leaning on the arm of the flesh. Are you listening to me? Listen now. I don't know when I'll be back. Listen now. So Abraham was given the promise of God. Joshua led the children of Israel into the promised land, but they had to learn to fight to keep it. There you go. So God gives Abraham, doctor, a, a promise. Abraham understands that the only way the promise will come is through his child, his man child. So Sarah is barren and it is impossible for her to have a child. But his concubine, modern preachers would call that secretary. I'm tired of making excuses for preachers. I'm not, I'm not making excuses for preachers that don't submit, don't understand authority. I'm, I'm, not making, I'm, not, I'm not making excuses for that. They live in Gnosticism, meaning whatever I do with my flesh, whatever I do with my actions really doesn't matter because my heart's right. My spirit's right, so therefore none of my actions have any consequence. That's a lie. When I shout, that's a lie, you ought to shout back, that's a lie. Let somebody out there know I'm not the only one who believes this. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. All right, so God made who a promise? Uh, Abraham a promise. But Abraham decided to try to fulfill the promise by the arm of the flesh. He got weary in well-doing. He got weary in waiting. There you go. Wait upon the Lord, Psalm 35. Wait upon the Lord, Psalm 37. Wait upon the Lord and you shall renew your strength like this. Wait. Touch somebody and tell them, hold on. We're always in such a hurry. God, God has not. I've got a word for you. I gave you a word earlier this year and it just came up in my spirit. Touch somebody and tell them, no prophecy ever spoken over you will fall to the ground. I got three women shouting and paid leadership sitting on the front row, not moving. No prophecy. Some of you were prophesied that your children would be apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and psalmists and, 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 and cause they out there on crack this morning, you've given up. No, oh my God, no word of prophecy ever spoken over my life will fall to the ground. Shout if you believe it. Some of you have been prophesied financial blessing. 
and yet you got your head hung low because we're in a recession. You have to lay hold on that word. You have to make it your own. All right. God made who a promise? I'd like to apologize for this, but since it's Labor Day weekend, I think I'll just go ahead. I think, I think I'll just go ahead and help my fine self. <laughs> God made who a promise? Abraham. Abraham got with his secretary and decided to help God out because God was unaware when he made the promise that Sarah was barren. God didn't know that. When God told you he's going to make 10 millionaires in this congregation, you forgot that in May of 2007 when we hit a recession as if God didn't know. My son was born a prophet. Yeah, but he had autism. Not one word of prophecy ever given to me or anybody connected to me is gonna... You'll lose your mind for the next 30 seconds thanking God, thanking God for every promise he ever made you. I'm just, going, I'm, just, I'm just going to go with it here a minute. I'm going to go with it here a minute. If I get to 1130, y'all just shove me off to the side and go ahead and finish. Shout! So Ishmael was born. Right? So Ishmael was born. Some of you are having a struggle because Ishmael and Isaac are both sitting at the table. My mistake and my promise. And they are at war with each other. And since God does not determine your future, you do, you cast the definitive and decisive vote. Oh, I'm coming. The word and the spirit. I am on a solid foundation. I know the word. That's one group of the church. but I am deader than three o'clock in the afternoon with no Red Bull. Over here, we got the whole other group. They got the spirit. They got a shout, but don't know why. They can dance, but they have no authority. Here's what's about to happen.
The full promise of this thing we call the church has not yet been realized, nor will it be realized until we get on the foundations of glory, spirit, manifestation, experience. See, because this group over here, they criticize that group over there acting out an experience. Signs, wonders, miracles, tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Praise him on the cymbals. Praise him on the high sounding cymbals. Praise him with a loud voice. Somebody run, somebody dance, somebody spin, somebody. No, 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 no. But this bunch have no discipline, no authority, no understanding of how it operates in this kingdom, no understanding of the rules, the principles of which they are shouting. They just know to shout. They're just looking for signs and wonders and miracles. They're just wanting an experience. They want to stick pennies on a wall and have their faith used to keep them there. experience no word have services for three hours at a time but nobody ever brings a revelation a word they want prophecy they want prophecy but they do not want the prophet they want a right now word instead of a 1166 pages word They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Stuff like, if I said right now to everybody that wants to shout, dance, whirl, spin, receive a prophetic word, if, if I said to this group over here, okay, write down a defense of your faith. Explain to me the blood covenant. Name for me the Ten Commandments. Go. We don't know the Bible. You want your, you want your children to have all these experiences. Why don't you sit them down and give them a word test? Why don't you sit them down and say, write me a definition of righteousness. Give me a biblical foundation for whether you are pre-tribulation rapture, mid-tribulation rapture, or post-tribulation rapture. Tell me why you believe what you believe. Right? Now look, we can be in here, and, and, and my, my, my position in the body of Christ, and therefore I have to drag you along, is to bring both together in a true revival. In a true revival. Here's, here's, what, here's what will happen when you're in a true revival. You will open your Bible in your basement, in your bedroom, and you had rather be there digging and searching and getting revelation than you would down here. Huh? Because I can tell you right now, given the choice between word and spirit, the choice God made was doctrine. Doctrine. He didn't say, I hold my spirit above my name. 
He didn't say, I hold experiences above my name. He said, I hold my word above my name. In the beginning was the word, and then the spirit moved. Tell me what a novice is. A novice is a person with an experience and no foundation of doctrine. That's a novice. Boy, is it good. That's the reason your Bible said, lay hands on no man suddenly. Meaning, to release them into ministry. Suddenly. Well, that's good stuff. Now, Wednesday nights, I'm going to teach you line on line and precept on precept. I'm not supposed to be doing this right now. But I, I'm just, I am so stirred in my spirit with what God the Holy Ghost has spoken to me and how vitally important it is right now, right now, to bring both together, the Word and the Spirit, the glory and the government, to bring them together so that God, for the first time in the history of the church since the day of Pentecost, will see the revival that we've been believing for. Okay, that's all free. This, I'm, just, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to pastor you a little bit and bring you where I believe we're going. Oh, hallelujah. 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 And see, we've lost a generation. People look at me. I promise you that right now I could sit down on this step and quote the Bible to you for the next three hours without taking a breath. Without taking a breath. I didn't learn that yesterday. That started being poured into me before I was born as my parents would speak the word of God over me. Now, you know, we got children raised in the church their whole life with Bozo the Clown and Foo-Foo the Dog and a light show. Huh? But they, they weren't, they don't know, they don't, they don't know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They think that's a rock band. It, am I all right? Am I all right? Am I all right? So the word being poured into one. Here's, here's a question for you. How many verses of scripture? did you commit to memory this week? Oh, I love the word. No, you don't. No, you don't. Tell it to me. The Bible didn't say, pray for pennies on the wall with your children. The Bible said, rehearse this word in their ears when you lay down and when you get up in your down sitting, in your uprising, put my word in their hearts. Not an experience, my word. The experience will follow. Well, you, you know, we got children raised in church, graduating from Christian high school that can't write down the Ten Commandments. I promise you, by the time I was five years old, I had to stand up in front of the church congregation and tell them the Ten Commandments. Why are you looking at me funny? Do you think I'm going to... Is anybody in America today screaming for the freedom of revival more than me? Anybody? No. We're going to get there, but I've received a caution from the Holy Ghost. Don't go running off after experience and not get that foundation in you. And it never stops. It keeps growing. I said it keeps growing. Well, you're staring at me, so I'll move on. Wednesday nights, government and glory. Hallelujah. How many of you are going to be here? Yeah. Okay, I can go somewhere else and see that many people. How many showing up on Wednesday night? Come on. 
I want to get something in my belly. All right. I'll see you all on Wednesday night for the government and glory. And then beginning tonight, since we do not know where we're going because we do not know where we've been, we are going to begin a series tonight. You say, well, he's taking off a lot of time making announcements. Honey, I will preach more Bible to you making the announcements than you will get most places in the next three months of sermons. Just relax. I'm a little bit unorthodox. Sunday nights, we're going to begin tonight with the healing revival. September to remember, all Sunday nights in September. The first Sunday night, tonight, Elder, we're going to begin with the healing revival of the 1950s. We're going to introduce you to the people. We're going to introduce you to what God said. We're going to introduce you to the music. I'm not, I'm not talking about Elvis. I'm talking about the music of a revival in the 1950s because we're not supposed to let go of anything. And if there are not remnants of that in whatever move of God we're in right now, we have missed it. There is nothing new under the sun. There's just a combination, glory to God. Am I helping you at all? And then the next Sunday night, we're going into the Jesus movement. Now the reason we're doing this is because God the Holy Spirit spoke to me in a Valor Christian College chapel and told me that we are having a renaissance right now. Everything comes full circle. And where we are right now is in a renaissance of the Jesus movement of the 1960s. Doctor, do you remember it? I remember it well. I was a part of it. I missed the healing revival, but I got in on the next wave. The Jesus movement. Jesus freaks. Jesus hippies. Tremendous movement among young people 18 to 30 years of age. It's exactly what we're seeing right now. But we are seeing most of it, unfortunately, in parachurch organizations that are not under authority and that are not doctrinally based nor sound. You're not listening to me. Then the next Sunday night, we're going to deal with the charismatic renewal. When millions of Baptists, Catholics, got any former Catholics in here? Look at all of them. They're the same age. They're the same age because they came out of that charismatic renewal. When Roman Catholics and Baptists and Presbyterians showed up for high mass and took communion, and after they swallowed the wine, started eating the bosta. Where God, oh, I feel it right now, like a mighty wave baptized entire churches in the Holy Ghost. I know about it. I was part of it. Uh, tell somebody and tell them we're going to see where we've been so we know where we're going. And we're seeing that right now, a great renaissance of that freedom and worship and praise and prayer but it must get on a doctrinal foundation. Amen. And then after that, we're going to go into what built this church. We're going to go into the great word of faith renewal. See what God does? He makes corrections. Watch. When we came out of the, when we came out of the Jesus movement, which was experience-based, see, this is what I'm saying. We always, we always got the wrong people at the table. And then we came out of that, which was work, which was experience based. We moved into the after the where was I charismatic renewal. Then we moved into the word of faith. the word of faith, right? Okay, we came out of the healing revival was born out of doctrinal revelation that gave birth to the major neoclassical Pentecostal church churches and denominations. It's where they came from. You're not listening to me. Do you care? 
That's where they came from, right? And then you had that great healing revival. Oral Roberts and A.A. And a. Allen and Jack Cohen, and Amy Simple McPherson. And, and, and uh, Amy Simple McPherson had a church this big in, in California doing, watch this, doing illustrated sermons every Sunday. 75 years ago. And y'all think you something because you got a video. Come on, God moves in these great waves. So it came out of doctrinally based and then signs, wonders, and miracles, the healing evangelists, and the reason they were able to operate the way they did was because they had the foundation of doctrine in them. And just as soon as they lost it, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been here today. I'm sorry. Should have started Wednesday. All right. So, so then you had the charismatic renewal, right? Right? Experience based. Signs, wonders, miracles, spirit. So what did God do? Make a course correction. Along comes something called the word and faith renewal. Where I'm telling you right now. It was word, 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 word. Every person in any church worth 15 cents at that point could give you a discourse on righteousness and holiness. We understood what the word was, where it came from, how to operate in it, how to stand on it. So then God needed to make another course correction. And so there was the advent of great preaching. Huge mega churches were built based largely on preaching and preaching is not style. Preaching is content. Most, most traditional African-American church services, I'm just looking at you and just making me think of it, are, are preaching, not teaching, except for Dr. Frederick K.C. Price, preaching. They're preaching. <laughs> And everybody feels way better, they're just not sure why. So along comes, at that time, a curly mullet wearing, tall, skinny preacher. And what they all said is, here's something different. Here's somebody that is, mm, yeah, and, but he's saying something. He's teaching us while he's preaching. Because preaching in its raw form is exhortation. It is not doctrinally based. Ah! Teaching is doctrinally based. So we have a time where in the word of faith renewal is the exaltation of the gift of the teacher. Which we must never lose. But then along came God said, okay, do something with it. And we went to building churches like the world had never seen. I'm telling you, 25 years ago, you never heard of a thousand seat church. Never heard of that. God said, now do something with it. So 14 major ministries spring up in one place. Doing so much it's impossible. Uh, uh, John Hagee, Kenneth Copeland, and, 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 and uh, T.D. Jakes all sat me down and said, you need for nobody to tell you what you're doing because it's impossible to do what you're doing. And I said, okay, don't tell me. Just let me go on in bliss-filled ignorance. Hallelujah. But do you see the cycles, the cycles? And where we are right now, there's such a movement. There is such a passion. There is such an excitement. There is such a fervency. There is such a, I want God. I want God. I want God. But if all we give is experience, we're going to miss it. We got to get doctrine and experience. We got to get this bunch moving in the spirit. And we got to get this bunch back on a doctrinal foundation. And when we do... Don't talk to me about seeker sensitive and user friendly.
because it ain't in none of it. It's not in any of it. It's nothing more than an appeasement to the flesh. And in both instances, word and spirit, the flesh has to be under submission. And we, we, can't, we can't go there. We can't go there. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you, this thing works. I'm telling you, the word works. The spirit works. Get your Bible open. Start studying that word. And when you get in here, you get in your prayer closet. Go to pray and like something from another world. Believe for signs and wonders and miracles and manifestations of the Holy Ghost. And then get back in the word and build yourself up again. And then pray in the Holy Ghost and build yourself up in your most holy faith, which only comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do you understand we're about to have an 